Dr. Sage here. In this video, we're going to begin our discussion of microbe-human interactions. In particular, we're going to discuss the human host and its microbiome. By the end of this video, you should be able to differentiate among the terms colonization, infection, and disease, identify the sites where normal biota is found in humans, and discuss how the Human Microbiome Project has changed our understanding of normal biota. Infection is a condition in which pathogenic microorganisms penetrate host defenses, enter tissues, and multiply. Pathological state is cumulative effects of infection damage, disruption of tissues and organs, and results in disease. Disease is any deviation from health. Factors that cause disease include infections, genetics, aging, and malfunctions of systems or organs. Infectious disease is disruption of tissues or organs caused by microbes or their products. Your resident or normal biota is large and diverse collection of microbes that live on and in the body, also known as resident or indigenous biota or normal flora. They include an array of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and viruses. These organisms have a profound effect on human biology. The goal of the Human Microbiome Project was to study the human microbiome. The preliminary results they have so far is that human cells contain 21,000 protein encoding genes, whereas microbes that inhabit humans contain 8 million. We have a lot of microbes in places we used to think were sterile, and all healthy people harbor potentially dangerous pathogens, but low in numbers. The makeup of your intestinal biota can influence many facets of your overall health. Differences in gut microbiome have preliminarily been associated with differences in the risk for Crohn's disease, obesity, heart disease, asthma, autism, diabetes, and moods. Sites definitely known to harbor normal microbiota include skin and adjacent mucous membranes, upper respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract including the mouth, outer portions of the urethra, external genitalia, vagina, external ear canal, external eyelids. Additional sites now thought to harbor at least some normal microbiota or their DNA include lungs or the lower respiratory tract, bladder and urine, breast milk, amniotic fluids and fetus. Sites in which DNA from microbiota has been detected include the brain and the blood stem. The benefits of the normal biota include influence the development of organs and prevent the overgrowth of harmful microorganisms. There's also microbial antagonism, the general antagonistic effect good microbiomes have against their intruder microorganisms. Microbes in a steady established relationship are unlikely to be displaced by incoming microbes. Factors that weaken host defenses and increase susceptibility to infection include age, both the very young and the very old, genetic defects in immunity and acquired defects in immunity, AIDS, pregnancy, surgery and organ transplants, underlying disease including cancer, liver malfunction and diabetes, chemotherapy or immunosuppressive drugs, physical and mental stress, and other infections. Endogenous infections are caused by biota already in the body. They can occur when normal biota is introduced to a site that was previously sterile, for example, E. coli entering the bladder resulting in a UTI. So when does it start? Well, a growing number of doctors and scientists believe fetuses are seeded with normal microbiota in utero. These microbes are important for healthy full-term pregnancies and healthy newborns. We know exposure occurs during birth when the baby becomes colonized with the mother's vaginal biota. Breast milk contains around 600 species of bacteria and sugars that babies cannot digest sugars which are used by healthy gut bacteria. Breast milk may be necessary for maintaining a healthy gut microbiome in the baby. So, sites containing well-established biota and representative examples in the skin, where we find gram-positive, gram-negative, and fungi. For example, approximately 4% of individuals carry Staphylococcus aureus on their skin. The oral cavity, where we find gram-positive, gram-negative fungi and protozoa. For example, we find huge numbers in human saliva. The intestinal tract, where we find gram-negative, a few gram-positive, and fungi. For example, the fecal biota consists predominantly of anaerobes. The nose, we find gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. For example, approximately 30% of individuals contain Staph aureus. The throat is gram-positive and gram-negative. This is biota similar to the oral cavity. 
Lungs, we find gram-negative bacteria. The lungs were previously thought to be sterile. In the vagina, we find gram-positive, gram-negative, and fungi. This biota responds to hormonal changes during life. In the urinary tract, we find gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Which in females, you can find this biota only in the first portion. The remainder of the tract is thought to be sterile. While in males, the entire reproductive and urinary tract is thought to be sterile except for a very short portion at the anterior urethra. All right, this has been your overview of human host and his microbiome. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.